July 1870. France is fighting Prussia. As the European superpowers square off, murderous new weapons are changing the face of war. As soldiers take cover, war moves off the battlefield and into towns and villages. For decades, France had kept an eye on Prussian ambitions. Napoleon III decided the best form of defense was offense. In 1870, he attacked Prussia. Again, the railway would play a crucial role in war. But possessing railways was one thing. Using them efficiently was another. Instead of dispatching troops straight to the front, the French sent them to regional depots. The reservists were wandering all over France looking for their regiments while their regiments were at the front. It took a long time for the, for the army to concentrate the forces it had available. The forces were anyhow inferior in number to those of the Prussians. There was simply bad command, bad management. The, uh, the, uh, the staff didn't know, for, for example, how to run the railway system properly. And even when in contact with the enemy, the armies themselves were worse handled than the German, German armies. Only 16 days after the outbreak of war, 400,000 Prussian troops had reached the front. Two days later, one and a quarter million, a feat of mobilization unmatched even in World War I. The French system was far more rigid, far more uh, centralized, and unless you got orders, you didn't do anything. And that, I think, was the, the reason why the Prussians were able to bring superior numbers to bear at decisive points on the battlefield, and the French weren't. The Prussian war machine rolled west toward Paris. In one month, the Prussians would march halfway across France, but first, they would pay a heavy price. With both sides using the most advanced weapons of the industrial age, there were bitter battles at the frontier. At Raisonville in one day, the French lost 16,000 men, the Prussians 17,000. At Gravelot saint Privat, eight thousand Prussian guardsmen fell in 20 minutes. Total casualties at Gravelot were 13,000 French and 20,000 Prussians. The French were killing the invaders at a horrific rate, but still the Prussians advanced. This photograph of French and Prussian soldiers at Sedan may be the first to show troops under fire. It is a remarkable picture by any standards. But most remarkable is, even with the battle raging, the soldiers seem more interested in the camera than their own safety. At Sedan, France was defeated. Effectively, the war was over. but Paris would not surrender. Bismarck ringed the city with artillery. It was a siege.
Over four months, Prussian artillery bombarded Paris. In the end, the Parisians were starved out. On January 18, 1871, at the magnificent Palace of Versailles, a German empire under Wilhelm I was declared. In less than 50 years, the armies of Bismarck and Moltke made Germany the greatest land power in Europe. With one billion dollars in reparations from France, the Germans built modern Berlin, a triumphant new capital for the new Germany, studded with monuments to its military glory. But more than the new Berlin was founded by the war settlement with France. The French had not just lost a billion dollars at the end of the war. Germany also took the border provinces of Alsace and Lorraine. The French burned for revenge. For now, Germany was satisfied. Europe would enjoy four decades of peace. Four decades for industry to manufacture bigger and better ways of killing. Four decades for science and engineering to take war into the sky.